Hello and welcome to Inside Sports. I'm your host, Todd Blackstock. Well, a lot of great things are happening over at St. Louis University. And on today's show, we'll head over to SLU to discuss a new $20 million facility upgrade with Athletic Director Chris May. Plus, Billiken head basketball coach Travis Ford will be in studio to preview the 2021-22 men's basketball team. So stay with us for this and much more coming up next on Inside Sports. Today played college basketball at both the University of Missouri and Kentucky. He was named the Southeast Region's most outstanding player in the 1993 NCAA tournament. He served as head basketball coach at the University of Massachusetts, Oklahoma State, and has led the St. Louis University team since 2016. And in 1997, played the role of Danny O'Grady in the movie The Sixth Man, starring Marlon Wayans. At this time, we welcome Travis Ford to Inside Sports. How you doing, Travis? Doing good, Todd. We've gone deep in the archives now, really deep. Yeah, Back you in, can tell I did my research. <laughs> had the glory days. <laughs> so playing basketball, how did you end up in Hollywood and in, in a Marlon Wayans movie? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Literally, a phone call, sitting in my house, get a phone call from the Touchstone executives out in L.A. Uh, they'd seen me play on TV. They needed someone who knew, bas knew a little bit about basketball, um, but was wondering if I ever acted before, and I said, absolutely not, never. And they sent me out to L.A., put me with some acting coaches for a day, and uh, made me audition for this role and end up getting it. And it was an experience of a lifetime, for sure. Oh, I can imagine. It probably had something to do with, you know, your, your free throw record. You could just <laughs> go up there and just be, you know, almost 100% at the strike. <laughs> I think you were kind of known as a, as a leader on the field, uh, in the, on the mm -hmm. court. Yeah. Um, field general, assist, free throws, leadership. Was that your game? It was. I knew my strengths. You know, I wasn't going to go out and, you know, beat anybody physically, obviously. No, no uh, you know, no dunking. And, you know, my job was to make everyone around me better. That was my job. And to knock down open shots when I was open. And... Uh, I knew that at an early age. Uh, in high school, I was a big time scorer, things like that. But I knew as I was going to get older, that type role was going to change. Uh, and when I you know, got to Kentucky, my job was to make the Jamal Masterns, all these NBA guys who were around me, make them the best players they could be. And uh, in turn, that would give us team success. So I totally, I totally fully understood my role uh, when it came to that. Well, let's take a step back to Mizzou. You played your freshman year there. You, you were from Kentucky right. originally mm -hmm. and had some good success in high school. Um, I'm sure the recruiting was, was pretty insane. Not sure how Mizzou yeah. may have you know, won out over Kentucky yeah. to begin yeah. with, but you probably broke a lot of Mizzou Tiger fans when you left. Uh, we saw your potential, uh, and you actually you paid the price. I mean, you sat out a year. Yeah. Was it worth it? It seems like it might have been. Well, you know, in the end, everything seemed to turn out okay, yeah. but I loved my year. I've always said I, I loved my year in Columbia. I loved being in Missouri, loved playing under Norm Stewart, had great teammates, Anthony Peeler, Doug Smith, Lee Coward, Nathan, but I go down the line. You know, we were ranked number one in America, I think, like nine straight weeks. Uh, but really, really enjoyed my time. Uh, nothing negative about it, uh, you know, being at Mizzou and living in Columbia. But they were going through some things at a period that, uh, that I thought it, at that point in time, thought it might be best for me to maybe look for somewhere else to go. And fortunate enough to be able to go to Kentucky, play for Coach Patino and go to a Final Four and do some things there that I think helped me propel into being a coach someday. Yeah, it really puts you on the national stage because, you know, when you're in Kentucky, you know you're going to be, it's kind of like the mm. Alabama of, of, <laughs> of college, you know, basketball. Mm. It really seems like every year, um, year in and year out, Kentucky's yeah. in the thick of things. You know, they, you know, spent time in St. Louis mm -hmm. uh, over at Scott Trade Center in sure. some tournament games. Um, yeah, it seems like, you know, being the field general, the, you know, the assist machine, good free throw shooter, yeah. solid character, would be a great fit to be a head coach. And I know, uh, you know, you had some opportunities before you made it up to, to UMass and Oklahoma yes. State. You know, you, uh, you got to cut your teeth and had some really solid records early on. 
Yeah, you know, I knew I knew at an early age or, or pretty early, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into coaching. Uh, one of the reasons I decided on Kentucky when I left Mizzou is I wanted to learn under Coach Patino and learn his system. And he had coached a lot of players like me, similar to, to how I played at the time. Um, but I knew I wanted to get into coaching, and I was fortunate to get in it probably different than 99.9% .9 of people. I've never been an assistant coach. I've been a college head coach my whole career. Uh, my first job at Campbellsville University, uh, I was 26 years old, I think, and a college head coach. But it, those three years I spent there were, I still say today, three of the best years of my life. You, I literally was kind of thrown in the fire and had to learn. Uh, you know, I drove the bus. I was the strength <laughs> coach. I was raised money. I did everything for three years. Um, and it, uh, it really helped me grow uh, in something I had no idea. I mean, I, my first practice was literally, I can remember like it was yesterday. I was as nervous as I've ever been as a player or coach because, you know, I was only, I was coaching guys that were maybe three or four years younger than I was at the time. Uh, but those three years at Campbellsville, uh, you know, really got my feet wet, uh, allowed me to grow uh, in, a, in a great environment at Campbellsville. And then I went on to, you know, a couple of Division I jobs and, and moved around a lot, as coaches do uh, a little bit, but love uh, living in St. Louis now. I bet early on you could school some of those guys that are coaching. <laughs> it's like if they get a little cocky or something, yeah. it's like, hey, well, I, watch this. <laughs> I did play in the early days, not anymore, but in the early days I played a lot in practice. I practiced with the team quite a bit. And, uh, that stopped several years ago, though. <laughs> yeah. So then you uh, ended up coaching, uh, you know, at Oklahoma State, UMass, mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. in, you know, yeah. out on the East Coast. So, you yeah. know, you've had a lot of experience with the media and all that, and Oklahoma State, big time, mm -hmm. you know, program in the over there, and and then you find your way to the St. Louis University. How did uh, you end up? How did they end up luring you here? You know, I grew up two and a half hours from here in Kentucky, in the western part of Kentucky, so I obviously knew a lot about St. Louis, obviously my time at Mizzou and things like that. And, you know, when I was looking at my next opportunities, um, I didn't know exactly, uh, I knew what I was wanting. I knew what I was wanting. I'd been around enough to know what I wanted at this point. And I wanted to be surrounded by people that, uh, you know, that I loved working with every day, from administration down to coaches. Uh, I wanted to live in an environment that people cared about their basketball, and, uh, and, and I wanted to try to get a little bit closer to home. I had a chance to meet with Dr. Pastello and Chris May. Uh, we talked about this job. I loved their vision of uh, what athletics meant to them, not necessarily about winning and about basketball, but their values are surrounding athletics and what our job is for our young, young men and women that we're around every day. And, it kind of aligned what I was looking for. You know, again, I've been to, you know, Amherst, Massachusetts and enjoyed my time there. Spent eight years in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I was looking for a place that, you know, I could say I could possibly end my career there. And uh, it really interests me after meeting with uh, the president, Chris May, that uh, this is a place I could do that. Yeah, I mean, it seems like I was even talking yesterday with Brian Kunderman and with the media relations. And he's like, you know, Coach Ford, he seems to like it here. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I, I love coming to, to, I don't call it work, but I come to the office every day. I love the people I'm surrounded by every day. I love the support we get from our administration to the fan support we get. It's great. But probably even more important, my family loves it. You know, my wife, my three kids have just absolutely loved uh, coming to St. Louis, and even my kids came at a difficult time. One was going to be a junior in high school, another a freshman in high school. Uh, my daughter was going to be a freshman, and then my younger son was in like the seventh grade. Uh, and that's a difficult time. And uh, St. Louis has been great to them. They love it here. Uh, they've grown up into you know the schools here, and now two of them are off to college. But we love uh, living in uh, St. Louis. You know, what a history of coaches here. I mean, Charlie yeah. Spoonhauer and Jim Cruz, you know, Rick Majerus, mm -hmm. you know, and now, now you. Um, let's talk about this year's team. You know, you've had some success. You started out. The team was a little down when you started, but you turned it around and had some success, uh, made a tournament appearance, which is always exciting. I know that's probably the goal each year is to, is to get in and try to win a game in the tournament, try to, you know, yeah, win absolutely. your conference. But let's talk about this year's team. We've got a few minutes left. Yeah, you know, we've, we've had a lot of success here. We've won a lot of games, but we want to win even bigger. We want more success. We're off to a tough start. You know, we've obviously lost uh, probably the best player in our league in Javante Perkins. That's never a great way to start, but uh, that's life. That's part of athletics. That's part of anything. 
uh, we've got to move on and, and, and pivot a little bit. Uh, it's going to just require some other young men on our team to step up even more. But we've got Uri Collins, who I think is the best point guard in, in the A-10. Uh, Gibson Jimerson is going to be relied upon to score a lot of points for us. Fred Thatcher is a great leader. Uh, but this is going to be a, about the total team. But I think we've done a great job of having some veteran players returning. We've added some pieces, whether it be transfers or freshmen, that I think is hopefully is going to give us a little bit of depth. But I like our team. Even though we've had a little bit of setback with Perkins and Javante, uh, I still think we have a chance to have a special year. How important is it to recruit the kids from the area? Because St. Louis is a hotbed. It really is. I mean, you know, you have your, uh, you know, your, your Floridas and your Californias and everything. But yeah. it seems like some great players have escaped St. Louis. But some also great players like Larry Hughes and mm -hmm. you know, Yuri Collins, Scott Highmark, guys yeah. like that, they stuck around St. Louis. And, uh, you know, and it really helped the team. With local talent, the Chaffetz Arena, and the new facilities on the horizon, how great is that for recruiting and, and how important is it to get uh, the kids? You know, it's, it's very important. And it's been a point of emphasis from day one. I mentioned that at my very first, first press conference that we want to spend time recruiting the young men here in St. Louis and the surrounding area. we got great high school coaches, really good AAU programs and coaches, great talent, great talent being brought up, young talent. Uh, and then I think we do have everything, you know, a young man could, you know, the Champion Center, the old Lachlan Champion Center is going to be second to none. It's a statement, not just to our current student athletes and, and the impact it's going to make on their careers, but also in the recruiting part that we can compete with anyone. So we definitely make recruiting the, you know, basketball players around the community. That's uh, definitely an emphasis for us. Fantastic. And any final thoughts before uh, we're actually going to head over yeah. and talk to, to Chris May, the athletic director, here in a second? No, we just want to pack Chaffetz Arena this year. we got fans back in the arena. It seems like a long time since we've been able to, to pack it out. So it's a great experience coming to a game. If you've never been to a game, they do a great job. It's just a fun experience being in Chaffetz. And I think we have a team that you'll enjoy watching. You know, it's fun, the band and all yeah, the fans great. and the kids and the mm -hmm. students walking up yeah. and down filming the Great atmosphere. The place. Yeah. Well, Travis, thank you so much for joining us here at Inside Sports. We'll have to uh, get together again uh, soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, we appreciate it. Thanks, Travis. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're heading over to St. Louis University to discuss the new $20 million facility set to break uh, ground in 2022 with AD Chris May. So stay with us. cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. And welcome back to Inside Sports. I'm Todd Blackstock, and we're at Chaffetz Arena on the campus of St. Louis University with the athletic director, Chris May. And Chris, thanks a lot for joining us today. And it always seems like there's something exciting going on at St. Louis University. And in 2022, uh, there's going to be some exciting groundbreakings and lots of fun things coming. Well, there is, Todd. It's great, great to see you and be back on your show. We very blessed to have announced uh, a week ago the uh, O'Loughlin Family Champion Center which uh, is the next step to really building a nationally elite athletic program here at SLU. We, we couldn't be more proud with the community coming together from the O'Loughlin family to uh, Send Team, Michael Knight, or if you go on down the line, Jim Cavanaugh. Um, many people really came together to, uh, to support our student athletes here at SLU, and I, I couldn't be more proud. And what the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center will do is it'll put our student athletes in the position to have what we call a nationally elite experience. So everything will be in one space from academic support, career support, spiritual development, sports psychology, nutritionist, um, all those things all in one space. So all 400 student athletes that are here at St. Louis University will be 
be able to utilize those services in one facility right next to Chaffetz Arena here, which we believe is the best arena in the country. So uh, we're very, very proud that uh, we had a, a large group of people come together, including Dr. Chaffetz. You can go on down the line, um, Keith Phoenix to the votes. Many people came together um, to really make it happen. And so it's, it's an exciting time for us here at SLU. We will break ground in, uh, in spring of 22 and we will open uh, late spring in 23 and it's a really big uh, step for our athletic program. You know what's really neat is how the Midtown area is expanding and it seems like downtown West is kind of moving into Midtown. It's a real nice segue there and the O'Loughlin group uh, obviously has done a lot of great things over at Union Station and they've got the Ferris wheel and the aquarium and all that and you know it's not too far down the road. Chaffetz Arena right here and this new development and uh, it seems to be a fantastic way to bring those the student athletes and the community together. Well, it really is, and we couldn't be more proud. And Bob Lachlan being such a uh, unbelievable supporter, but a visionary. And, and when, when I started talking with him about the project, the project really started back eight, nine years ago when I met with a gentleman by the name of Marvin Wall. And he was his community leader and big SLU philanthropist. And he, he challenged me. He said, hey, Chris, what would it take for SLU to be at the elite level? What, what else do you need? And, I, and we started drawing up on, on, on a napkin what it might look like. And then I went to, uh, and then unfortunately, Mr. Wool passed away. And it, it, the, the idea st stayed there for a little while. And then I went to Bob O'Loughlin. And Bob, Bob asked me the same question. He said, what, what will it take? What are you thinking? And so at that point, we really started building building the vision on what it would take. And, uh, and Bob is one of the greatest uh, visionary people and looking at how do you develop and how can, what are all those pieces you gotta put, you gotta put together to make it really sure. work. And, and you can see it in all their work here in St. Louis, uh, from 360 down to Hilton the Ballpark mm -hmm. to Union Station, what's going on at Westport, to Westport Social, you know, all those things. Um, he's been a really wonderful uh, person to help uh, push this project and help us really create what we believe will be an elite space that we haven't found another place in the country that's going to be able to do what we're going to be able to do for our student athletes. I tell you, it's going to be amazing for recruiting. Uh, just looking at some of the artist renderings and things, you know, when you have a Division One recruit coming to, you know, St. Louis University or looking at it, they'll be comparing it with other facilities around the nation. And I tell you what, this is a uh, first class and as new as they come. Well, it'll be great. And it's like when you walk down the hall down here uh, we've got the practice gym on the yeah. pavilion on the left to the right are, are technology suites and um, and Mark Scoggins who's a very successful attorney here in town and Judith Crowder his mother-in-law they committed to helping us build these these uh, electronic suites that are all about technology so every team is going to be able to go in and break down film and, and use technology to really prepare themselves to train. So again, we're, uh, the facility is going to be high technology. It's going to have a basketball, a basketball operations center that puts our basketball coaches in position to compete with anybody. Um, Jim Cavanaugh, the worldwide technology people, help support us to where we'll have a soccer uh, operations facility similar. Again, high technology mm -hmm. to put our coaches and our student athletes in position to compete at the the very highest level and so that's what I'm thrilled about there's a there's a nutrition piece that teams will go in and they'll have their pregame meals and Keith Phoenix who's a very successful attorney here in town helped us put that together where before a game before a basketball game Travis Ford will be in there and have his team together for a meal and they'll be able to break film down and do all the other things well, all at the same time all at the same time as they prepare for a game so uh, we, we and then and then there's student development pieces on how do we really nurture all these 400 student athletes and get them ready for when they're done playing sports? And so Linda and Alan Vogt are a couple locally that are so supportive of what's it gonna to take to help these students when they're done? From preparing for uh, interviews to helping them go out in the world and be successful leaders. And so there's whole, a whole programming piece around that part. So when you put it all together, it's putting student athletes in position to get a great education at SLU, to leave here with a degree and be successful, to compete for championships, and thoroughly to really give back and participate in this community. That's the vision and we, we couldn't be more thrilled that we're, uh, 
putting the pieces together to make it happen. It was very exciting seeing Scott Highmark, a, a former student athlete and great basketball player from Parkway West that chose to stay here in town. Uh, you know, one of the broadcasters, uh, you know, Joe Buck lending a hand, uh, you know, with the marketing and some of the pieces. It, it's really cool and, and done so first class and professionally. Uh, I'm excited that all the different sports teams seem to have their own little areas carved out in the new facility. Will they each or will they be well, sharing well, different they'll rooms share, during all, the seasons? Yeah, all the big, they're going to share all the big places. W what it's going to do is the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center is going to give us the ability to build community. And so there will be student athletes studying from all 18 sports all the time in there. They'll be studying. They'll be getting tutor help. They'll be preparing for interviews. They'll be, they'll be getting nutritionist support. They'll be getting all those pieces in addition to the specific sport can go prepare for a game. And they can do all those pieces. So the, the big vision is we're supporting all 400. The, uh, from the spirit squad people to our student managers to our student workers everybody will have the ability to really participate and utilize the services and we'll have we'll have plenty of opportunities for uh, everybody in the community to use the space pre-game events and all those type uh, I had somebody ask me well what, will you allow them to put do wedding receptions in there we'll probably get to that you never <laughs> know um, but uh, it, it's really uh, it's going to be the crown, crown jewel to go on top of the best basketball arena in the country and so we're we're very very proud you know you should be very proud it's a it's a very exciting time uh, along with Scott Highmark and you know some of the other dignitaries they've come and the facilities are just amazing I, I think back to all the work Father Biondi did here um, I, I, I was listening to the piece earlier and I remember West Pine Gym and I remember when Shimmy Gray the women's basketball coach came in and said it's a little tough recruiting you know playing in West Pine Gym with you know some of the pipes right here on you, and um, just over the last you know couple of decades with the, the Chaffetz Arena being built, and then this new expansion. Um, I know the luxury boxes here inside the arena are amazing. You know, can you maybe discuss Father Biondi's some of the great things that he did, and, and now the uh, the new leadership well, at St. Louis? Well, yeah, Father did a great job of of getting Chaffetz Arena here. Okay, it took many years. Everybody did a did put a lot of work into it, and without Rich Chaffetz, it doesn't happen. Rich Chaffetz, when they was out there, really jumped on board and said, I want to be part of SLU being at the elite level. That's why the, the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center, uh, Rich Chaffetz has been unbelievably supportive of that, that endeavor as well. And so you had Chaffetz Arena come on board and, and, and we had Rick Majerus here and we got it going. And, and, and now we've evolved into well, we talk about comprehensive excellence all the time. We talk about how do we put every student athlete in position to have success. And the position we're in today does not happen without Dr. Fred Pastello totally believing that athletics can be a wonderful resource to asset to the university and a way to really serve a group of students and to open up the place to the community. So without Dr. Pastello, doesn't happen. Without the leadership of chairman of the board, Joe Conran, without the chairman of the athletics committee, um, both uh, Bob O'Loughlin and Keith Phoenix, without all of those people being totally in line with what we do to support student athletes, this stuff doesn't happen. And so that's what's been as rewarding as any is Father Biondi did a great job for many years setting the foundation and now we're in it we're taking off at a way different speed and at a way different level and uh, it's a really exciting time for our, for our students and our and our teams you've got uh, our men's soccer team top 10 in the country back to where they were for a long time right Kevin Kalish has done a great job with them our women's soccer team playing in the A10 semis um, we're, we're as good a team left and we've won three A10 championships in a row nobody's done that before our men's our cross country team had their best A10 championship in school history they were second last year and they'll compete to win it again next year or uh, you go on down the line all of our teams have really had great success this fall and I believe it goes back to 2020 during 2020 we sat down when COVID hit and we started meeting every week as a staff and as as, as coaches and what we all committed to is that we're going to come out of COVID way better than our competition and we doubled down on our values and we doubled down on committing to our student athletes and our young people and fortunately that's what's happened. We've had great success. Our soccer teams are rolling. We've got a 
great soccer facility that'll be done in two months here that w that came about because we had uh, the our our support group externally came together and said how can we make sure SLU soccer is in an elite level? And so the facility getting going in there right now will put us, Herman Stadium will be the best college soccer facility in the country. I mean, I'm really excited about it. The, the Champion Center, there isn't another one. We looked at everybody. We looked at everybody from Spokane, Washington to Washington, D.C. And we looked at all of the places that we compete against and we took the best parts of each one and said, we can do it right here at SLU. And so that was the vision, and then our community has just done an unbelievable job of, of rallying around SLU students and how we put them in the best position to be successful. And, and you mentioned Scott Highmark. Scott Highmark's one of our, we couldn't be more proud of Scott as an alum. He, he's an alum, he's an investor, he's a community leader, and he, he is there every time. So whether it's Scott Highmark, whether it's Jim Cavanaugh, whether it's Joe Wiley, Larry Hughes, go on down the line in all sports and you've got people who went through this program and got their degrees and they've gone on to be highly successful business people, highly successful people in the community. And that I might be as proud of that as any because they are all rallying around what can happen here at St. Louis University. We had an event just last week where we raised scholarships for our women's student athletes, for women's scholarships for student athletes. And uh, we have former basketball player in Bo Meehan, who's a Lewis Rice, one of the leaders at Lewis Rice, who she helps, she and Martha Uhlhorn, another trustee, help really raise money for our young women. And we set a record raising money there. And so you can see that the bar just keeps going higher and uh, it's getting better and better for SLU students to come here and participate with our athletic program. So it's, a, it's an exciting time. We're very, very proud of where we are. And uh, it's one of those lines where the best is yet to come, clearly, because uh, in the next 36 to 48 months, this is going to be a great, great place. I'm really excited, Chris. So uh, why don't we go out and take a look and, and see where this new expansion is going to be. And uh, we'll uh, see where the groundbreaking is going to be. And uh, you know, we'll pick it up from there. We'll go take a look. Let's, Let's go, go take a look. So Chris, this is the site of the new facility that's uh, bringing so much attention and excitement to St. Louis University. It is. Right here is where the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center is going to uh, be built. It's, as you can see, it's going to connect right to Shape It's Arena. Um, it'll put our student athletes in position to get all their services all at the same place. And, and again, we haven't, found a, we haven't found a better place in the country than what this facility and the services will do for our student athletes. So they will walk from campus, they'll come in, uh, get their academic support, their nutrition support right here, meet with their coaches, uh, get their training, the training room work done, get the sports performance area going, <laughs> and then they'll be ready to play. And so it, uh, it's a great, great uh, opportunity for us to, to really put all those services together in one place. And right here is where it's gonna happen. Uh, by uh, spring of 22, we'll, you'll be here when we uh, get the shovel out yeah. and we'll be moving some dirt. And then there's gonna be a lot of dirt moving in a hurry because uh, by uh, late spring of 23, we're gonna open the doors hopefully right around graduation day because we believe graduation day is the ultimate day, right? Oh, it's yeah. It's when young people come here and all the families and everybody come to celebrate uh, be becoming a Billiken graduate and joining that unbelievable group of alums out there that are doing such great things in our world. And that, that's, that's what this is really all about, Todd. Putting these young people and all the pieces in front of them so they can take advantage of it as they prepare to go out and make a difference in our world. Wow, it's really amazing how downtown West and the Midtown Corridor are really coming together with St. Louis University and our area's civic leaders. Well, that's our show for today. We'd like to thank Brian Kunderman, Travis Ford, and Chris May for making this show possible. And we'd like to thank you for watching Inside Sports on STL TV. Experience St. Louis.